Now that we've determined what data will be held in this class, we need to create a constructor, a special method that allows us to instantiate this class. To do that, add a new line after the line public vector2 center and type the following public game object open parenthesis texture 2D loaded texture close parenthesis open curly brace rotation equals 0, 0.0 F position equals vector 2 dot 0 sprite equals loaded texture center equals new Vector 2, open parenthesis, sprite dot width divided by 2, sprite dot height divided by 2, close parenthesis, close curly brace. This is the constructor for our new game object. Notice that it takes an argument, the texture 2D, which is the image data for our game object, what will be drawn on screen. The constructor sets up default values for the position and rotation of the object, then assigns its internal texture 2D object, called sprite, to the texture 2D object that is passed in. It then calculates the center of the texture, half the width and half the height. Let's use this class now. Click the Game1.cs tab. Now that you're in Game1.cs, scroll to find the list of declarations near the top of the file. This is where we declared background texture and viewport. Create some empty space by adding a new line, and then type the following. Game object Canon We've just declared a new object of the game object type, which we defined in gameObject.cs. Once we initialize it, we can draw it on the screen, make it move, and so on. To initialize it, we'll have to call the constructor we wrote for it. But to do that, we need a texture 2D, which will load in the load content method. Scroll to find load content. Inside this method, you'll see the code that you wrote to load the background texture. Background texture equals content.load. Just after that line, add a new line, and then the following lines. Canon equals new game object, open parenthesis, content.load, open angle bracket, texture 2D, close angle bracket, open parenthesis, quotation, capital sprites, backslash, backslash, canon, close quotation, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon, Canon dot position equals new vector two open parenthesis one hundred and twenty comma graphics dot graphics device dot viewport dot height minus 80 
close parenthesis, semicolon. Here, we initialize the canon object, setting it equal to new game object, which calls the constructor, and we pass in the argument of texture 2D that comes back from calling content.load. We then manually set the position of the canon to 120 units from the left hand side of the screen and 80 units from the bottom, so near the lower left corner. The canon will now be created and initialized when we start the game. Time to move on and define how to interact with the canon. Move on to the next step.